Hello and welcome. Um, so this is the first of the separate question and answer videos that I'm going to post. I think based on last week's, um, I felt that it made the video too long, sticking the question and answer at the end. So I'm trialing this out. So producing a separate video, which will be the question and answer follow up to the previous weeks. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So this is and welcome. This is the question and answer session to the planet formation conundrum shall we say so first up is a question by uh, graham um and, and he points out a number of different things so the, the first thing that i think is particularly interesting is obviously within our own solar system we have you know a variety of different planets that are in different states and by studying those we should be able to glean more about that process and that's actually true. I mean, having done the electric Jupiter model and actually uh, I finalized the electric Saturn, which should be coming out on, on Monday, particularly in the Saturn one, actually, I found there was a lot of stuff that, that hinted towards how these planets forms and in particular the ring system and, and the fact that I, I saw a duplicate in those rings in some of these images. So I, I think it's a very good point that there's a lot that we can learn from this which we could then use to extrapolate out, which is exactly, you know, coming back to this whole point of what Alvin wanted to do, is you need to start with what you know and extrapolate outwards, not backwards from what you think to try and match it to what is there. The other point I thought was particularly interesting in, in, his, in his comment was that we don't actually know the structure of any planet. We don't even know the structure of our own Earth. We make uh, suppositions about what we think is in the centre of it, but we don't know whether it's a solid core, whether it's a liquid core, whether it's hollow. None of those facts we actually know. So again, that's a huge problem. And, you know, it's a very difficult problem for us to solve because, you know, there's only a limited amount that we can do to, to without, you know, drilling great big holes. Obviously, there's seismology, which tells us something about how the waves move through the Earth uh, and around certain parts of it. So we have an idea but we don't actually know. Um, and again, we're making assumptions for, for the other planets as well. Second comment is from Decoded Art. And he points out that wouldn't be... The second comment is from Decoded Art. And he points out that it would be normal for uh, various elements to be drawn into clumps along the Birkman current. You know, what our current idea and again you know we're only really starting to try and understand the process of Birkman currents what we believe happens is that they are obviously filamented so twisting so the magnetic fields twist as we uh, as the filament moves along and within that it is possible to set up what they call a, a Markland convection and that is a way of separating out materials through the ionization process so Markland convection works by the fact that uh, certain elements will be uh, harder to ionize than other and that means that they will remain ionized for longer and therefore move closer to the center of that stream. So it is indeed possible that that is one of the mechanisms that helps separate out different materials for the planet formation process. But we, we don't know enough about it and it's very difficult to try and replicate that in, in a lab because obviously you need it on such a huge scale in order to see that process actually happening. But it is believed that that is one of the mechanisms by which some of these elements can be separated out and may help to explain the different compositions. But again, it, it's not it's not that we, we fully understand that because a lot of it depends on how that is then initiated so is it a z pinch or is it a plasma cloud or you know there and again there are a number of different ways so it could be that the markland convection just spews out different materials at different points and they can then condense down into objects or it could be that z pinches at those points will create objects that are more rich in those elements than others Next up is a question from St. Louis Arch. And particularly for me, the thing that was interesting in here is, is the notion of rings. So he talks about that there were experiments where different voltages results in matter naturally collecting in different orbits of rings. 
And indeed, that's sort of what I showed with the, the, the Birkeland experiments. And since there are other papers that I've discovered while looking at the, the Saturn ring system that indeed allude to the fact that material can be sort of siphoned out to these ring systems based on the potential in the, the central object. Now, obviously, these are, are small experiments in a lab rather than on a planet scale. But I think in that lies a clue to how these planets form. And indeed, it may indeed imply that what we see as uh, accretion disks, you know, the photos that they see, may indeed be nothing more than this process in action. Now, the question is, what happens to that matter that gets pushed out into those rings? You know, is it matter as in physical dust and particles? Or is it plasma in glow mode um, that eventually then ends up, you know, being pushed outwards? So in other words, is there is that part of the process of forming planets as in the alvin and the uh, accretion model or is it just a phenomena an electrical phenomena uh, that happens during the formation process of these objects be it a star be it a planet um so it, it is an interesting kind of connection and and one of the things I'm starting to look into is, is obviously if we assume that it works at a, at a number of different scales, so at galaxy scale, at star scale, and at planet scales, then that process must be the same. It wouldn't make sense for the process of forming a galaxy to be different from that of forming the stars and the planets. And one of the things I'm currently investigating is the whole concept of plasmoids. This is again one of those things that people mention it but what the hell are they what what are plasmoids and how do they form and i think in that the the, the concept of understanding plasmoids there is some papers that i've discovered that talk about how plasmoids could indeed form what we see as quasars and potentially black holes and in that process um it may reveal uh, the the mechanism for the formation of the galaxy and then the question is, can we replicate that same process down to smaller and smaller scales? So that's one of the things I'm sort of investigating, the direction of plasmoids and then looping that back in terms of uh, planet formation, star formation and, and galaxy formation. Next up is a question from Shockwave, and he mentions that I, I didn't include the Herbig Hero objects. And uh, correct, I, I didn't necessarily include them in that formation process. But I suspect that these objects are, again, the same phenomena that, that we see, that it is um, an, a, a filament structure that is, that is emanating from an object. And, you know, we don't really understand what causes that, that jet to be ejected. Um, and again, I think this links back to this idea of plasmoids again in terms of investigating it. And it is it is a stream, uh, a Birkeland stream, that is being pushed out from this object. It is highly energized and that's why it glows so we can see it. Um, but I suspect that the, the other stars that we see forming on, on filaments undergo the same process. It's just in these objects it is much more obvious because there is a lot more energy and therefore the filament itself lights up, which you can't always see the filament. We can't see the filament that connects to, to our star and to other stars. So it is an interesting one to study. And indeed, I, I have added it to the list. So I will be using that to, to, to look at examples as well. So thank you for that. Next up is a comment from Shifu. And he asks us to think deeply about the possibility that the only difference between a planetoid, a gas giant, and a star is the maturity in the development in a circuit. And, you know, a bit like, I, I guess, in biology, the way things grow bigger. And, yeah, I mean, that's definitely something that, that we need to look at. Because, obviously, you know, when we look at stars, we, we assume a certain um, idea that it is a certain size that it uh, emits a certain amount of energy and that it's composed of a certain you know type of substance but indeed could it be that in fact um the, as the energy gets drawn in that the first thing that forms is something much much smaller in that process of star formation 
And the reason you don't necessarily see that left over is because it, that process continues quickly. So you build up and up and up, and then what you're left with is this star. Indeed, it could well be possible that if the current suddenly ceases or something interrupts that process, that you are then left with something in between. So it is an interesting idea and one, and indeed one that I hadn't considered. So again, when we look, when I go back and look at this idea of, of planet formation, there's a lot of things I think that need to be pulled in to, to try and make sense of it. And I'm not saying that I will be able to make sense of it, but there are certainly many avenues to, to continue this investigation. So yeah, I will add that onto the list. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.